What started out as an idea to essentially paint with clay has turned into a full blown comparison of every brand of air dry clay I can get my hands on to see if I can find the best brand available. But let's go back to where this video originally began. I had this idea of creating a 3D canvas made of clay. I wanted it to be very flowy and organic rather than just a flat surface. I actually got the idea for this project after watching a video by Tina Lay. She's a DIYer and artist who I highly recommend. And I think she got this idea from TikTok maybe? I don't know, I can't seem to understand the world of TikTok. But like most things I see, my brain changes it up a little bit and the idea just continues to evolve thought about painting directly onto the flowy surface with my design, but I wanted the images I painted to pop off the canvas and be 3D too, and clay seemed the most suitable option to pull this off. I've been playing around on my iPad lately, mainly doodling art supplies and flowers, and it's the flower drawings I've been working on that I wanted to use for this artwork. They are a nice simple design and shape, so are easy enough to recreate with clay. After the clay canvas had been shaped and set, I got to work on the flowers. Printed the flowers out on paper, cut them out, then using a clay tool, I traced them onto the clay. This seemed to work quite well. I've never done anything like this before, so I just learned as I went and refined the process along the way. And I seemed to be turning out some pretty decent flowers that I was happy with. Only problem was the clay itself. I was a bit frustrated with it. It was crumbly to use and brutal when dry. So, in my frustration, I rushed out to buy another brand, although not feeling too hopeful for a much better result. It's air dry clay, and I just presumed it was a temperamental medium. But the second brand I bought was so different to the first. The way it felt, the way it dried, the strength of it, and it got me thinking, how different would another brand be to these two? Is there something better out there? Have I actually already got the best here? Or am I using this medium completely wrong? That option is actually a really strong contender. My knowledge on this type of clay is very limited, but I'm really enjoying using it. And I wanna keep doing more projects like this. So I think I really need to nut out which brand is going to work best for me. I've been out to all my local stores, got as many different brands as I could find. Plus I jumped online and purchased a few more that would arrive in time for this video. So here we are with these 11 different brands in front of me. Plus I've actually got one more on the way that I hope will arrive in time for the video. Plus when I find the one that I like, I'm actually going to redo this and see if I can make it better. With my limited knowledge and not exactly sure what I should be looking for in an air dry clay, I've come up with the following categories that I think I should be looking for. First is conditioning. How easy is it to get to a workable state? Workability. How easy is it to sculpt with? Does it hold its shape? Does it feel nice? Dry time. How long does it take to dry before I can paint it? Shrink factor. How much is the clay going to shrink as it dries? Strength, how brittle are the pieces once dry? And finally, bond. How well do the pieces that I join together stay that way? The first clay I'm busting into is by Boyle at $9.95 for one kilo of clay. It's very affordable, but I've not had a great experience with Boyle in the past. I did a paint pen review a while back and the Boyle mark has bottomed out big time. So I'm not hopeful. As a part of assessing the clay's workability for me and what I like to do, I need to see how it handles finer details. So all clays will get rolled into a thin sausage and curled into a coil. The boil clay is already showing its weakness. As I try to form the coil, it cracks around the edges. Plus the clay gives way under pressure way too easily. So any little touch misshapes the structure I'm trying to create. The next brand is Kmart's Anko brand. At $3 per half kilo, it is the cheapest I'll be reviewing today. In addition to coiling the clay to test for finer details, I will also make 11 little mushrooms. This will help give me a feel for the clay, how easily I can form it and how well it will hold that form. Plus, I'll be making the stem and cap of the mushroom separately, then joining them using a crosshatch on the two pieces I want to join and making a glue with some of the clay mixed with water. Then once dry, I can test the bond of the join. Initially, the Anko feels similar to the boil, but after working it a little more, the clay holds its shape better. The problem I found is it felt like it needed water, but adding a little water made it gooey very quickly. 
So it was a fine balance between okay clay and awful clay. Next is the DAS clay. I used this clay to make quite a few flowers earlier, so I know what it's like already, but I need to put it through the same tests as the rest so it's a fair comparison. And this clay is just so different, and I'm not sure if I like it or not. I feel like it does well with finer details and holding its shape, but when you add water for smoothing, it goes slimy and slippery, making it a little hard to hold. Plus, the outside of the clay dries out rather quickly and forms a crust if you don't work with it quickly enough, which in turn means you need to add water, which makes it slippery. Plus, I did find it difficult to join pieces together, especially making the clay glue slip stuff. However, because it does well with the details, I'm willing to push through that problem for now. Moving on to Crayola, and even though it's made in the USA, I don't have high expectations. I mean, come on, it's Crayola, and the brand can be a little hit and miss. As I'm opening and conditioning these clays, I'm learning the conditioning process is pretty equal across all, and unlike polymer clay, it doesn't take too much. So I'm scrapping conditioning from the report card. The Crayola clay surprisingly isn't too bad to work with. Like the Anko clay, I need to be careful not to add too much water as it gets sticky quickly. Plus, it is a little brittle for finer details, but all in all, it forms up well and holds its shape. Next is the Kadink clay, and it feels exactly like Das. Like, exactly. So I sussed out the packaging and both are made in Italy. So I wonder if they're manufactured by the same company or use the same recipe? Dunno, just feels the same. In addition to the coil and mushroom, I'm also making what looks like little janky trinket dishes. But these little dish things will be used to help form my flowers into different shapes as they dry in my later project. Plus, they are all of a similar size. So I'll use these blobby dishes to test the drying times. This mad clay is one I've used a lot of and had mixed results. I really want it to be good because it's made in Australia and I love supporting local, but in the past I have gotten frustrated with it not handling the finer details and being brittle. But after using other air dry clays now, I realise this is the closest to what I remember true clay to be like, you know, like the sort you fire in a kiln. And maybe I've been hard on it, as it's the first air dry clay I used after using polymer for so long. So it was part of my learning curve and getting used to a different product. So I'm giving it a second chance. I like sculpting with it. It feels nice, holds its shape, but it is still a little brittle when trying to shape finer pieces. The female is another brand I'm familiar with, but I'm used to the polymer variety. But I'm pleased to find this German brand obviously knows what they're doing when it comes to air dry clay as well. I don't really have any complaints about it. It's easy to work, holds its shape, doesn't crumble, and I can get decent details with it. Plus, it smooths down easily. I feel like the Fimo is leading the way in the workability category. When I get to the elements of art clay, I feel like I've already opened it. The three layers of wrapping is identical to the Anko. Plus, the feel of the clay is the same too. Both are made in China, so I think it's the same clay manufacturer, rebranded by two different brands. It holds its form fine, but goes gooey with only a little water, just like the Anko. Montmartre is a brand I have a lot of in my art room because to me, it's what I classify as a good all-rounder brand. It's decent quality at an affordable price. So I started using this brand feeling confident, but that confidence is definitely misplaced. It has a similar feel to the DAS, but stickier and slimier. I checked the packaging and it's made in China, unlike the DAS and Kadink, which were made in Italy. And when I get to joining the pieces together, it was the worst. I could barely make it work. As far as workability goes, 
this clay is on the bottom of the barrel along with the boil. The Jovi clay, which is made in Spain, has a similarity to the Fimo about it, just the way it responds to pressure and forming it. But like the Das clay, the crust tends to wrinkle when you shape it. That's the best way I can explain it anyway. Not as bad as the Das though. The last clay I'm going to use today is by Craft a Corner, and I don't really have anything nice to say about it. It's brutal to use for finer details, gives way under pressure so it's hard to form, plus it goes gooey easily. So at the end of the workability test, I have six clays that I'm happy with so far, being the Kadink, Jovi, Das, Fimo, Mad Clay, and surprisingly Crayola. After 24 hours of letting the pieces dry, I go to flip them and give their backsides 24 hours to dry too. But some are not completely dry on their exposed side. The Das and Kadink still need more time before turning, but the slowest of them all is the Montmartre. In addition to dry time, I'm also assessing how much the clay shrinks and gets misshapen as it dries. And with everything dry, I can now do the strength and bond test. But hold everything, because we have a late entrant. The parcel I have been waiting for has arrived just in time. It is by the brand Clayish. All the other clays I have purchased have been from typical retailers, but the Clayish is a small Australian business selling nothing but clay related products. I think I found it through Facebook advertising. Their secret squirrels knew I was looking for clay and bombarded me accordingly. I purchased a starter kit that includes instructions, maybe I'll read them, some clay tools including a pointy wooden dually decky, a wide mouth metal scoopy thing, a wired thingamajig with wooden tassels, a small mouth metal scoopy thing, a flat wooden dually decky, flat metal scrapey, fine metal stubby pointer, and a sponge. There's also this pack of conversation starter cards and most importantly, two big packs of clay. I did end up reading through the instructions, mainly because they were really quick and easy to read. So let's bust into the clay. Give it a sniff. Yep, smells like clay. I run it through the same process as the other clays, including cutting a thin square of clay, the exact same size as I did for the others that I will use for the strength test later. Then I work on making a little mushroom to get a feel for this clay. And it's really, really different to the others. Good different. I won't say it's better than some of the others, but it feels very earthy, like the clay is gritty. I actually like it. It forms up nicely, there's not too much give under pressure, and doesn't crack badly with fine details. It might not be the clay I would use for every project, but there's something about it. I can't really explain it, but I just want to keep working with it. So even though I haven't found my favorite clay yet, I start to make some flowers for the final art piece of this video using the clayish clay. And I think that says a lot about the clay. When you find something that feels right and you want to just keep working with it, that is one of the most important factors in my book. This clay is making me want to try some different clay projects. Maybe some more traditional stuff like little pots or dishes or something. Plus, according to the book, this clay can be fired and soon I may be taking ownership of a kiln. It might not be suitable for clay as it only gets to 1000 degrees, but I'm hoping to experiment with it and this clay may just work. Anyway, after this clay dries in only 24 hours, it's time to complete the rest of the tests for my comparison. The next category to assess is shrinkage. I will use all these square pieces to see how much the clays shrunk, plus how much they warped as they dried. I made all the square pieces exactly the same size and placed them on a grid so I can easily see which ones got smaller. Plus I laid them completely flat, so it's also easy to see which pieces lifted at the edges. I also examined the little coils I made to to see which distorted and the Crayola really bottomed out in this test as it warped the worst. But all the clays bar two had warping that I wasn't really happy with or they shrank too much. The two that I found acceptable were the Das and the Fimo. 
The next test is strength. I want to see how easily the little details crumble and how much it takes for me to break the square pieces in half. And the results are interesting. Why I say interesting is because the clays that took the longest to dry were the strongest, being the Das, Jovi, Montmartre and Kadink. Although I gave Crayola half a point for this category because even though it wasn't as strong as the Das type clays, it didn't crumble like all the others, including the Australian made clays being mad and clayish. I knew the mad clay was weak, but I'm really bummed the clayish isn't very strong for thinner pieces like this. Oh, and the Fimo was strong too. The final test is Bond, and I'm really surprised by the results of some of these. The ones I'm not surprised by are the cheaper brands like Boyle, Anko, Elements of Art, Crafters Corner, which were all very weak. And then the Montmartre simply fell apart in my hand. The Crayola has surprised me again as the join between the two pieces is holding strong. But the real surprise is the Das, Kadink and Jovi, as the gluey slurry stuff I used to join the pieces wasn't easy to create and I didn't think it had worked very well. I'm also really pleased with the Mad, Clayish and Fimo as they're super strong too. So which clay came out on top in my rating system and which clay do I prefer regardless of its score? Because for me, a lot of it comes down to feel. Well, let's begin with the bottom of the barrel. And the ones I will never buy again are Enco, Elements of Art and Montmartre, getting a pathetic one star. Boyle and Crafters Corner didn't do much better at one and a half stars. The decent three star clays are Kadink, Jovi, Mad and Clayish. Even though the Clayish only got three stars, it is a clay I want to use and experiment more with in the future. At three and a half stars is Crayola. Das got an impressive four stars, but the well-earned perfect five stars goes to Fimo. I love this clay and I can't wait to use it for my final piece. For the final piece, I've opted for a round wooden base. The two clays I'm going to use are Das for the part that covers the wood and Fimo for the flowers. I'm using Das for the base as it's nice and strong even when thin and dries without too much warping. I would have preferred to use the Fimo for the whole thing but I've got heaps of this Das and I want to save that Fimo for the flowers. As I'm using the Das clay I'm actually liking it a little less because that wrinkling is very evident and it's difficult to smooth away. It's rather annoying so I feel like I wouldn't rate this clay 4 stars but maybe 3.5 losing half a star for workability. The flowers I made earlier from the clayish turned out nice, but the clay isn't strong enough for this type of project. So I'm using my new favourite Fimo. It's great for fine details, is nice to sculpt with, plus it's strong enough for thin pieces. And it really does show up the das as there is none of those annoying wrinkles. Well, seems I've talked my way through most of this video, I'll give you guys all a break and turn up the music. Finally, it's time to get some paint onto this project. I want the flowers to be really bright and cheery. So after a coat of gesso for each, I use pink, yellow and purple for the flowers with a little pop of green for the leaves.
trying to embrace the original doodle art style of these flowers and to really make them pop, I give them all a black outline. I use a black brush tip paint marker, which I do struggle with a bit as my hand is not the steadiest. I think I should have used an ultra fine paintbrush, but all of mine have gone really fuzzy. I think I need to ask Santa for some new ones. For the base, I use a nice soft blue so that the flowers will stand out. As I paint the base, the texture from the clay I used is still very evident. So rather than get frustrated, I lean into it and go over the whole thing with a lighter shade to bring out the texture more. It ends up looking a little bit like blue denim material, which I quite like, but I'm not sure that the texture is really showing up on the camera very well. We are nearly there. I get to attach the flowers to the base using some Araldite. I chose Araldite as I want it to be really strong, but in this Aussie summer heat, it is drying out way too quickly and I have to keep mixing up more glue. I should have just used something like E6000 or Gorilla Glue. Once all the pieces are attached, the final step is to give the whole thing a coat of matte varnish. And here is what it ended up looking like. I'm quite happy with it. It's fun, funky, and I think it's got a real 90s vibe, which I like. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great and safe Christmas, and I hope to see you next time.